So hopefully the wind's not too bad, you can hear me. Um, so there, there's some things that are really important to do before you lose weight, before you lose fat. Um, if you don't do it, it can actually be quite dangerous, especially if you're losing fat quickly, you know, like a few pounds a month, um, it can be quite dangerous. So really advise you to go through this checklist before you lose, you know, more than a couple pounds or so, I'd say. So, okay, so here's why. What is in the fat? What is stored in the fat? Oftentimes, there's a, there's a high degree of toxicity that's stored in the fat because your body's protecting itself, right? You know that. Your body's protecting itself, and so there's this excess fat to protect you. That can be, like, chemically, it can be physically, um, and it can be emotionally too, right? Maybe mentally, spiritually as well. So the body is all those things, right? Mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual. Hopefully you can hear me in the wind here. Just uh, kind of a cold, windy day, walking that low tide at the beach. So here's what I'd recommend doing. Number one, are you drinking enough water? For most people, probably a gallon of water a day. Um, and let me just say quickly, the reason to have this checklist is because it will help remove that toxicity from your body, at least, you know, to a certain level. And then from that point, there'll be so much less toxicity in your system that when you are losing fat, less of it will be released. Because otherwise, if there's a high degree of toxicity in that fat, it can go right into your bloodstream and it can literally kill you if you lose it too fast and you're super toxic. So going through this checklist is super important. So plus or minus, you can drink more or less depending on how big of a person you are and what climate you're in and you know activity levels and stuff like that. But let's just say approximately, you know, four liters of water a day, a gallon a day. Um, listen to your own body, of course, as always, for what feels right to you. Um, just keep in mind the body's not 100% accurate. So bear that in mind, you know, use your, use your um, judgment as well. Um, use common sense as well as listening to the body. So ideally spring water in glass. Um, you can also get reverse osmosis or some kind of highly, highly filtered water, not, not some, you know, countertop pitcher. That's not going to cut it if you've got highly toxic tap water. But ideally spring water in glass, definitely not water in plastic as, as much as possible. Um, and then, you know, you could also, you could use a metal water bottle too, but glass is going to be better. It's going to be best by far, but really not plastic if you can help it. But, you know, step one is just get that gallon a day. Now, don't go right for the gallon a day if you're used to drinking very like two cups of water a day or six cups of water a day. Don't go straight to that gallon um, because you need to make sure you're getting enough electrolytes to balance out that extra water. So where are you gonna get those electrolytes? Right now, if you're willing to, I highly recommend, if you don't already, pause the video after what I said, what I'm about to say and order some mineral salt. Celtic sea salt is a currently popular example. There's many different kinds of mineral salts. That's a raw salt, and it's not just sodium chloride. It's a whole bunch of other trace minerals as well. You need that salt. Um, you know, you need some kind of healthy salt in your, in your body. So more water means you're gonna need more salt to balance it, to balance it out. So you can start with say a half teaspoon a day or so mixed in with your water or just sprinkled on food. You know, you can have a teaspoon too. Just do it to taste. If you like more, have more. If you like less, have less. Just careful not to drink a huge amount of water without get, balancing it out with electrolytes because that can also be dangerous. Um, but I don't want to deter you from getting that water. And so give your body the water and the electrolytes, the electrical energy and the conductivity to help you eliminate that toxicity. So that's step number one. Um, and step number two is breathing. Also extremely effective way to eliminate toxicity. So take these things at your own pace. I mean, there's really no need to force it. Just do it in a way that works good for you. You know, if you're uncomfortable, that's fine, but don't, don't push it to the point where it's going to be, you know, potentially harmful. Just, just take it one step at a time and, and build it up to the point where you can do it safely. So here's what I'd recommend for the protocol. By the way, let me know if you have any questions about water and you're not sure how much am I drinking enough? Am I not drinking enough salt, you know, salt and all that. Um, so if you, I just sorta of did one, take a deep breath. I'd get in, in the morning if you can, at least 75 deep breaths like this. 
not necessarily all in a row. You can take breaks in between, but try in the first couple hours of the day to get in 75 deep breaths. So all the way in and then just relax and let the air out. Don't force it in, no. <gasps> not like forcing <laughs> the, the breath in, but just breathing in, allowing yourself to relax. You can fill up your belly and then your ribs and then relax. That can be really effective, but just have the structure of I'm going to take a deep breath in, but also have the kind of versatility and the openness to what your body needs in that moment because there's infinite ways of breathing and just let your body breathe kind of how it wants to, but with a little extra, okay, we're doing deep breathing now. And that can be amazing for cleansing. And that goes hand in hand with drinking lots of water and electrolytes too. So 75 of those, obviously you can adjust it if, as need based on your circumstances, work up to it and all of that, based on what works for you, what feels right for you, of course, as always. Um, little seagull. And, uh, and then the next thing, it's similar to like, breath of fire from yoga breathing. If you can do t about 25 seconds of that also in the morning, um, but with a little bit of versatility, not trying to do it exactly correctly, like how they say to do breath of fire, but just do it in a way that works for you. So it can be nose or mouth actually. <laughs> that time I actually liked taking the air in through my mouth and then breathing it out my nose. And that time was all nose, but whatever pace works for you to really pump that diaphragm muscle and pump that air out. And that can be incredibly flushing as well and really, really help your body eliminate toxicity. So again, we're eliminating toxicity gradually because if you eliminate it too quickly, it can be quite dangerous. Um, so if you start feeling lightheaded, dizzy, nauseous, extra, extra headaches, the, all of these can be symptoms of detoxing too quickly, um, cramping, which is also oftentimes a mineral deficiency. In other words, being dehydrated. Um, hydration is water plus minerals, electrolyte being one type of mineral. So, <laughs> you know, getting in 25 seconds or so of breathing like that per day doesn't have to be all in a row, but you could do two or break it up into two or three or four um, or five, however many you want, little, little segments in the morning, ideally. And um, getting some movement in. So right now I'm walking and uh, you know, I would say work your way up to an hour, hour and a half of movement a day at, at kind of a medium, a slow to medium pace. You know, if, if, if that's too much for you right now, that's fine, just do less. And if walking isn't work for you, either you don't want to, you're not excited about it, you don't, nah, I'm walking. And you, you know, there's a million different things that you can do. Um, if you like going to the gym, there's a whole bunch of different cardio equipment there all kinds of different stuff. If not, you can get it even just treading water. If you're in a pool or in, you know, some water in, out in nature, just treading water can be absolutely amazing for movement. And again, a total of an hour to an hour and a half a day. Doesn't have to be all at once. You can break that up as well, but that'll be very important for helping your body eliminate toxicity, partially because of the breathing that happens with it, but also just because of the blood, the blood flow, right? Just Imagine for me, if you can, uh, 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 you know, uh, like a swamp or like a stagnant body of water that's all stinky versus a body of water that's renewing itself. Super beautiful, kind of gray and cold and windy. Um, it's renewing itself and it's, and it's always bringing in fresh new oxygenated water and it stays clean and pure um, and nourishing and alive, right? So that's what we want our bodies to be like as well. And we need to have movement, as you know, it's just a reminder for that to happen. And, and if you can't, if there's too much pain for walking or whatever other types of movements, you know, you can, uh, you can do it from a chair and from your bed. I mean, I had a foot injury where I couldn't walk and I still got my movement in just by, just by twisting side to side, or you can, you know, you can move, you know, your left arm, right arm, left arm, right arm, almost like you're punching, but in, you know, non-violently, but just moving. You can move your arms up over your head. You can move your head back and forth. Um, you can even breathe as if you were running. <sighs> 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 
right? You can be, you can be, I was actually running right there. That's funny. I started running on accident, but you could be sitting, sitting down or lying down. I mean, that's somewhat hyperventil ATE, so you could do it slower. Right? There's literally infinite ways that you can move. So even if you're paralyzed, the, the parts of your body that aren't paralyzed can move, right? If you move them fast enough, you can move your tongue, your eyes, your face muscles. You'd be surprised how much blood that can actually pump throughout your body just getting that movement. And so any type of movement that you can do and that you enjoy, hour, work your way up to an hour, hour and a half, you know, slow to medium pace. So we wanna we want ease into this. And again, we wanna detoxify slowly and get our bodies ready for losing weight. Um, and then once, you might lose a little weight during this process, which is great and fine if that ends up happening, but you need to be at a certain baseline of health and a certain baseline of a lack of toxicity in your system in order to safely be losing, you know, a significant amount of fat. So it's extremely important. Um, okay, so we've got our little protocol here. We got the water and electrolytes. Again, let me know if you have questions. We got the hour to hour and a half of movement a day. Work your way up to it as works for you. We got those deep breathing techniques. Make it your own. Do it how it works for you in the morning. And then another thing I find be I found to be very effective is actually getting in hot and or cold water. So even a couple days ago, I could feel a little toxicity in my body. Probably some spending too much time on technology actually. And I've got these dark circles under my eyes, which I get when I'm living in a moldy environment. Um, so I need to change my environment. It's the one that works better for me, which I will do as soon as possible. I've got a couple things lined up. But anyways, the point is, you know, that's toxicity in my system, even if I'm eating healthy and uh, drinking lots of water and doing the breathing and stuff. So just getting in a hot tub really was like pulling this stuff out of my tissues, getting in the ocean as well. And even if you're not, getting out in, in or, you know, a lake or a stream or a river or whatever, pond, um, whatever kind of water out in nature. But even if, even if it's just a, a hot and cold shower, you know, just think about what happens when you take a cold shower, all the, you probably know this already, but if not all the, some, some of us don't yet, sorry, I don't, you know, haven't really put our attention on this yet. So it's, it's kind of cool to hear this actually. Cold water is going to make the blood vessels shrink, right? So if we get in really cold water, the body's gonna take the blood out of the periphery and into the core, into the you know vital organs to keep them warm. So you don't, you know, so you you know keep your equ equ equilibrium as best you can, and so that you don't die if it's a really extreme situation. So sometimes we lose the ability to do that for our blood vessels to fully constrict like that. So just getting in cold water. And, and, and kind of reminding our blood vessels how to fully constrict. And then it can be amazing to get, then get into hot water. You just go hot and cold on a shower or whatever, or just whatever hot and cold setup you got. And then that, now the blood gets back into those blood vessels and they open back up again. So you, you're practicing opening and closing the blood vessels, right? And, and pumping the blood back and forth. And that movement is going to mobilize things and again, don't want to do it too fast. So if you're feeling dizzy, for example, slow down, like take a break, just chill for a bit until the dizziness goes away and then you can get back into it. But we're not trying to do it too fast because again, it's dangerous to, to cleanse too quickly. Dangerous and it can just cause, it can be mildly harmful in, in an unnecessary way, even if it's not pushing it to the point of actual full on danger, but it can, it can be very dangerous. So just take it easy, take it slow and you'll start to perceive if you're not already like, oh, I can feel I need to be in this hot tub a little bit longer, for example, until I'm fully kind of cleansed out what I needed to cleanse out. And if you can find situations like that, which are cleansing, but they also are like, like um, nourishing as well, and almost potentially maybe even charging you up, charging your battery as well, that's pretty cool to get that kind of double whamming of the cleansing and nourishing. For me, oftentimes getting in water has that effect. Walking in the forest can have that effect as well. Um, just, you know, finding ways where you can kind of get as much 
benefit as you can out of a situation without getting overly, you know, too much planning and thinking about it. Um, just doing what you enjoy and what feels good for you. So yeah, getting in hot and cold water can be absolutely amazing for mobilizing, for mobilizing things. So, or any kind of water can be very cleansing. Um, so that's, that's what I'd recommend to start with that protocol. Make sure you're getting in enough water, whether it's hot and cold or whatever the situation is, if that feels right to you, of course, um, can be very cleansing. That would be the fourth option. But yeah, number one, water and electrolytes. Number two, the breathing. Number three, the movement. And then number four, getting in water. And keep on cleansing and keep on nourishing yourself well. And I want to say something else about electrolytes and also minerals. Okay, it's very important that in addition to that salt, any kind of raw mineral salt, whatever brand, that you, you have fruits and vegetables that are as nutrient dense as you can find. So hopefully you can find like a local farm, you know, do some research and look up, try to find like a local farm that's not <clears throat> putting toxic stuff on their food or in their soil. And, uh, and eat those vegetables, like get plenty, if it feels right to you, of fruit and vegetables because the minerals in there, and to some degree, the electrolytes, well, again, they'll help mobilize things and they'll help feed your body well. Um, and that's a, a mistake. We're talking about cleansing to get ready to lose fat. That's a mistake a lot of people do make with cleansing is that they're not well nourished enough as well. So you need a balance. You need to be well nourished. And when you are well nourished, your body will naturally eliminate more effectively too. And kind of like when you take a full inhale, you'll probably have a more complete exhale as well. And they kind of feed each other and work hand in hand. So even though you're cleansing, remember not to deprive yourself because that's one of the key mistakes that people make when they're trying to lose weight or they're trying to cleanse is that they're, 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 you know, they're limiting themselves. They're depriving themselves of actual nourishment that they need. So remember, this is very important. When you get everything that you need, nutritionally and otherwise, your body will find it much easier to cleanse, okay? So this is not about deprivation. It's about getting everything you need and then giving your body a little extra help in the ways I'm describing and whatever other ways work for you and feel right to you to cleanse, to release that stuff and to get to a certain baseline level of, you know, vitality and lack of toxicity in your system until you're ready to start losing fat. So again, let me know if you have any questions about this process. Let me know how it's going for you. Um, you know, if you want, you can even make a video and post post the video in the comments and yeah, let us all know how it's going. <laughs>